Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. I'm Diane and today I'd like to share with you what I could call perhaps a relatively epic fail followed by a rescue mission. So today we are basically going to rescue a wren. I decided I was going to paint a wren because I hadn't done one for ages and my daughter suggested it would be a good idea. We have quite a lot of them in our garden here and they're always rushing around in the undergrowth underneath the bushes. So they're quite evident and uh, they're a lovely little cheeky bird and lots of people like them. We've sold quite a lot of pictures and prints of wrens over the years. So I thought let's give it a go. So here I am doing the sketch of the wren. Just doing a nice little outline in pencil on a small sheet of watercolour paper. If you want to have a go at uh, doing this drawing, you're very welcome. Sorry, doing this painting. And you can download a copy of the sketch from my website, which will be completely free at dianeanton.com. Just pop on over there, put it in your shopping basket and check it out. You don't need to pay. Um, you'll get that for free and lots of others as well. We've got quite a lot of sketches on there that you can use. That said, here I am carrying on doing the, uh, the rest of the sketch where the bird is standing on a log. And I was feeling quite optimistic at this point, thinking to myself, this is going to turn out quite well. I'm quite happy about this. But you know how it is some days you just don't seem to have, I don't know, the inspiration or even the simple ability that you thought you had to do something simple. So we're going to watch as I paint a wren and um, then, well, we'll see what happens. I'm going to use um, my usual limited palette, which I use for English garden birds, which would be um, probably ultramarine blue, um, burnt sienna, probably sepia, a little bit of black, maybe some potter's pink or some um, perhaps um, some Naples yellow. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and um, yeah, let's get started with the painting. Now it's a well-known fact that we all learn from our mistakes and some people say you can't learn anything until you've made some mistakes. So I thought that for this one I would point out my mistakes as I go along so that you can avoid doing the same thing or when you do it yourself you'll notice that that's what you did and that's why it didn't work out the way you anticipated. <clears throat> so I've done what I always do, I've wetted the area that's going to be the bird to start with and now I'm just in the process of making my first mistake, which is I decided to use, for some reason, raw umber for this point of the painting. Um, and that was a very bad choice. Normally, I begin with something like quinacridone gold, which is a nice bright yellow, yellowy brown color. But I didn't have any, so I opted for this. And immediately, I'm feeling this is very dull and uninspiring and have a feeling it's not going to work. Plus, as if that wasn't bad enough, as you can see, the paper is starting to um, fur up as I've only put one little tiny bit of water on there, yet this paper is um, causing me problems because it's starting to fragment. It's not looking good, is it? So I know now I've got to be very careful about not working too much into the paper. This is obviously a fragile kind of um, paper. Perhaps the sizing is, um, is missing. Perhaps it's an old piece of paper. I don't really know. But anyway, so I need to watch out. Now I've gone down to the um, stump, the wooden stump. And I'm continuing to make the same mistake. I'm using um, more raw umber, I've got some what looks like Indian red there and some ultramarine, which provided I don't do anything else to that area there will probably be okay. It's nice and light. Let's hope I don't. Now I'm going in again into the bird with what I picked up there. I'm not quite sure what color that is, 
but that is a dark brown. Ah, now there comes some quinacridone gold and immediately the whole thing is lifted. You see that? It's just so much better all of a sudden. And um, maybe I've got a hair on the painting now. You see there's a little hair there that's probably come from one of my dogs. Um, but I'm going to have to just ignore that for the minute. So I'm going ahead and painting the legs and wondering what to do next. I like the quinacridone gold. It's a lovely light colour. It moves well on the paper. It blends with everything else. I'm coming in here with a little bit of ultramarine blue or probably cobalt blue it looks like actually, not ultramarine, um, in the breast. I can just, as I'm watching myself do this, I can see myself feeling so uninspired. It's just, you know, one of those days. We all have them, don't we? Okay, I've <clears throat> used some black to um, do the eye. I've dropped a tiny bit of black into the beak and now I'm coming into the tail feathers with a little bit of black and the color is breaking up there where I don't really want it to. I like to use simple strokes, but um, something wrong with this paper. You know, a, a bad workman always pain, uh, blames their tools and I'm starting to feel that way inclined at the moment. So um, now we have how many mistakes so far? Five? So what do I do to rescue this? Let's add some more burnt umber, shall we? And why don't we paint over the top of the quinacridone gold and hide that beautiful colour? That's a good idea. I think I must have missed out on one of my cups of coffee this morning because I wasn't functioning. And here's that uh, burnt umber colour again coming in and I'm using it to cover up all the subtle strokes I had done before that I wasn't happy with so now I'm painting over the things that might have been good. Now here we are, it's a little bit lighter here and I'm working into the area around the face of the bird, that's not too bad. And you know, if I'd have stopped here and let it dry and then come back with a few touches, I probably would have been okay, but I didn't. I did not stop. I ploughed on regardless. I wasn't concentrating. I wasn't inspired. I wasn't in the zone. I wasn't in the flow. I didn't have anything going for me on this particular occasion. And I think at this point I accidentally picked up some sepia. This is a very dark brown colour and I thought, okay, well, there's nothing to lose. I'll just go ahead and paint sepia pretty much all over the whole entire painting. And in the original uh, recording over this, I said to my daughter at this point, I don't think I'm quite in the mood for painting. I don't seem to be able to do anything right today. And I think you'd probably agree with me. Epic fail, one out of 10. But I'm going to show you in a minute how even an epic fail can be rescued. Sometimes when you realize it's a failure, you might want to really make it awful. So let's put black or sepia or Payne's grey or whatever that nondescript colour is over the whole bird and then we're going to take it away, turn it over and swear. Now in actual fact I use this technique sometimes on purpose, sort of on purpose, whereby you let your first painting dry and I'm using a different painting here just to illustrate what I did this time. This is what I did to the wren. I let it dry and then I went in with water and a brush and I just gently rubbed off the top layer 
of work from the painting, leaving an underlayer of the earlier stages of the painting. And then I set that aside, let it dry and came back to it the next day in a totally different frame of mind. Bearing in mind, you know, we're all in the COVID world at the moment and our emotions are all over the place, aren't they? So here's the washed out wren. Um, I didn't do anything to the tree stump because I had managed to restrain myself from ruining that at the time. So I'm now looking and re-evaluating what we have here and saying, I'm saying to myself, okay, the shape is good. It's wren-like kind of shape. The stump is good. Let's see whether we can um, bring this one to completion. So I've got my cobalt blue, my sepia and my burnt sienna there. And I'm going to start by coming into the breast, giving a little bit of blue shadow there, very lightly. I think you probably can see that my touch was much lighter on this particular day. Perhaps it was a sunnier day, warmer perhaps. It's hard to paint when your hands are cold. And I've remembered how to vary the strokes, to change color frequently, not to paint large areas of the bird in one color, um, never to have the same color on your brush for more than two or three strokes at a time. All of these things make an enormous difference to the final result. To use lots of broken strokes rather than long, um, highly covering strokes. To remember to do dots and dashes and remember to work across the whole of the painting, not just one area at a time. And to remember to leave it to dry in between coats so that uh, you can better judge the tonality and the contrast and the shadows and the color because watercolor dries much lighter than it does than it appears to be when you first put it on the page. So I'm trying to remember all the things that I know and always do except when I forget. So I'm just going to work another couple of minutes on this bird just to finish it off <clears throat> and to to show you that uh, even something which you think has completely gone wrong, you can save the piece of paper at least, if nothing else. Don't forget that you can always wash the paint off. As long as you've bought reasonable, good quality paper in the first place, um, it won't fall to pieces. The area that I mentioned where it was roughing up at the beginning near the breast, um, nothing else happened anywhere else on the paper, so there must have just been a little bit of damage there and I was managing, I managed to work around that. Um, so to finish this painting off, after I'd done the bird, I just put in a few light indications of foliage behind the stump there, just to give it a little bit of context, and I called that painting done. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed seeing me paint this epic fail. Washing out is a useful technique that can be handy if you um, really feel that a painting has gone wildly wrong. So. It's worth knowing and I hope this will be helpful for you in the future. So if you did enjoy the video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like, leave a comment, any questions you have please put them below and uh, don't forget to subscribe and press the notifications button. And now I will let you get on with the rest of your evening and I'll say bye bye for now, take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye everyone, bye bye. <laughs>